All right, we're going to be going to the book of Joshua. Joshua. That is the sixth book in your Bible. Joshua chapter 7 is where we want to go. We're going to read the first verse, and then we're going to read verses 24, 25, and 26, but... Keep it handy because we'll be referring to it throughout the message. So once you found your place, let's all stand. Joshua chapter 7, verse 1, and then verses 24, 25, and 26. And the Word of God says, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And we want to go down to verse 24, 25, 26, the last three verses in the chapter. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place is, or excuse me, was called the valley of Achor, Unto this day. Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, I pray. Lord, help us to get the message today. Lord, this is a serious message. They're all serious, but Lord, this is one, Lord, that really, Lord, in the world in which we live today, Lord, we've got to get this in our heads and get this in our hearts. So, Lord, I pray, help me to preach. Lord, don't let me try to do it my own wisdom. Don't let me try to do it my own strength, Lord. Uh, that's only going to fail. It needs to be you. It needs to be all you. I want you to get all the glory for it, Lord. I'm just here to fulfill the place that you gave me in the body. Let you get the glory from it all. I'm going to pray and ask for it in Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. When God sent Israel into the promised land of Canaan, to conquer it, and to drive out its squatters, because that's exactly what they were, who not only didn't belong there, but who were so sinful and so vile that God was bringing judgment upon these people through this conquest. Now, the very first city-state, and that's what they were, there was no nation in Palestine. Okay? Every city was its own autonomous city-state, kind of like the Vatican City. Interesting. <laughs> the very first city-state to which they came, that, Jer that they would go against, was Jericho. And the Lord had given them a very clear and specific commandment concerning Jericho and all the goods and the property that were in Jericho. First of all, he told them everything that breathes dies. But he told them all the goods, all the property, all the stuff that's there is mine. Uh, go to chapter 6. Go back one chapter in Joshua chapter 6. We want to look at verse 17, 18, and 19. And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein. To the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. Of course, Rahab ends up being in the lineage of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and ye in any wise... Keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make yourselves accursed. 
when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Anything that would survive being tried by fire, <laughs> you know, uh, the Lord was going to get that. This was to be God's part. It was a tithe offering of thanksgiving to the Lord for all that he had done and all that he was going to do for them in their conquest of the land. So we go back to Joshua 7, verse 1. But, <laughs> it's always a but, hmm? the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. You'll note here how the Lord holds all of Israel guilty for Achan. The reason being is that his commandment was given to them collectively. The entire nation was responsible to observe and to keep this commandment. Many times what God requires is a collective expectation. Whether it be within a family, whether it be within a church, whether it be within a nation. Blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. Yeah, well, you blessed in the United States of America, folks. Uh, every person within that assembly is required and is expected to see to it that the collective commandment is observed. For example, go to Deuteronomy 13. Go back one book. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 through 11. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 through 11. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, I have a dream, <laughs> and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him, and that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, shall be put to death, because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in, so shalt thou put evil away from the midst of thee. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, thou shalt not consent unto him nor hearken unto him, neither shall thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he has thought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. I mean, that's Old Testament. Okay, fine. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 
1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And you're puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. And the Lord does not tell Israel that someone within their collective has sinned against them. The Lord just simply withdraws himself and his blessings from the whole because there's willful sin in relation to the accursed thing within Israel. And this is what can happen to any assembly in relation to a collective commandment. Again, whether it be a family, whether it be a church, whether it be a nation. A lot of the ills of this nation are due to the Lord withdrawing himself and his blessings due to the ignoring, the accepting, and the promoting of sin. So what was the total cost of Achan's sin? Now, first of all, Achan gets caught. Go to back to Joshua 7. We'll look at verses 10, 11, and 12. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou upon thy face? They had been pleading and crying before God because they went to fight against Ai and they got uh, their butts kicked. One they quit. God said, get up off your face. He said, no, there's something wrong here. You, you know there's something wrong here. Why would I not do what I said I'd do? There's only one reason I told you what it was. Get up off thy face, wherefore liest thou upon thy face. Israel is sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen, and disassembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel cannot stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed from among you. God holds the whole collective responsible. I'm going to leave it up to you to figure it out. For you to get it right. Verse 13, 14, 15. Up, sanctify the people and say, Sanctify yourselves against the morrow, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family of which the Lord shall take shall come by households, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has wrought folly in Israel. Sure, your sin will find you out. Okay? Verse 16, So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarites, and he brought the family of the Zarites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And you might be able to hide it from your parents. You might be able to hide it from your spouse, your family, your friends, your employer, your pastor, your church. But even if you do, you certainly have not hidden it from the Lord. And unless you confess it, and you forsake it, you're going to face it at Christ's judgment seat. I praise God Almighty 
There's nothing you can do in this life that's going to cause you to lose your salvation. But if you think you're going to get by with sin, and that there's not going to be a cost for it, okay. well, I'm, as long as I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. You know, and they, they give no thought to the judgment seat of Christ and what a terror that's going to be. Achan only confesses his sin when he can't hide it any longer and the consequences of it are coming down on his head. And like so many, so many, Achan wasn't sorry for what he'd done. He wasn't sorry. He was sorry he got caught. How do I know that? Because he didn't say a thing until he couldn't hide it anymore. Okay? If he'd been convicted in his heart and felt guilt about it, he would have come himself. I'm going to look at that. You know, Aiken finds out the total cost for what he's done. You, know, you go back and look at verse 3, 4, and 5. You know, and they returned, he sent some men to check out Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. He says, Oh, this, this one's going to be a pushover, man. We only need about two, three thousand people. And we, we take that city and not even break a sweat. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men. And they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about 36 men. For they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebarim. And smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. 36 men lost their lives fighting against Ai for one reason alone. Achan. Achan's sin. 36 families grieving <coughs> over the loss of a father, a son, a husband, a brother, an uncle, a cousin. And Achan kept his mouth shut. He knew why it happened. He knew what had gone wrong. That's why was, he wasn't sorry for what he'd done. He was only sorry when he got caught and had to face the consequences. God had separated himself away from the corruption of willful sin and rebellion and so that the enemy had prevailed and lives were lost. Go well, back to chapter 7. We're going to go down verse 24, 25, 26 again. Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them under the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. The Lord was righteous and just. And you're always going to reap more than you sow. And as Achan's sin cost 36 lives and had caused anguish and grief and loss and hardship to 36 families, so Achan reaps the terrible cost of his sin. And so does his wife, and so does his sons, and so does his daughters, the fruit of his body die with him. His possessions, everything that he owned, was forfeit to pay for what he had stolen from God. Well, that's horrible, people say. 
That's not right. That's not fair. They did nothing wrong. Yeah, well, neither did the 36 men that died. Neither did their families. But they had to pay a price they didn't know. I know of three people who died in a car wreck because the driver was texting while she was driving. When they used the jaws of life to tear the car apart to bring her dead body out, her phone was still clutched in her hand. I know four Christian teenage girls who died in a car wreck at 2.30 in the morning. They had all agreed together to lie to their parents about where they were going to be in a sleepover. They were hit by another car at an intersection the driver who had fallen asleep behind the wheel. There was no booze. There was no drugs. There were no boys. They were just out joyriding in rebellion against what their parents' rules were at 2.30 in the morning after having lied to their parents. Four white caskets. Four broken and shattered families over a lie. I know of a couple who used to come here who agreed to get high together both of them claimed to be saved. I led both of them to Christ. Both OD'd. Because the drug they bought had been laced with fentanyl. Both had to be medically revived. One spent weeks recovering in the hospital. The other months and still isn't fully recovered. If you love me, you'll go, go buy some of this and let's get high. Let's party together. Fourteen-year-old boy <laughs> this week murdered two 14-year-old students and two math teachers. Seriously wounded nine others, another teacher and eight other students. He and his parents Last year, both been investigated by the local sheriff's department and the FBI due to threats of violence that this boy had made online against the school. Law enforcement decided to do nothing because they felt there was insufficient evidence. Families going through a nasty divorce. Dad decides, after this, okay, after this, after, okay, don't tell me you don't know your kid and you don't know what's going on. If you are, buys him a gun for a holiday present. Provided the gun. Okay. They're going to try this 14-year-old as an adult. We're going to try him for four murders, nine attempted murders. He's facing life imprisonment. Get this, with a chance of parole. The father, the father, who he was living with, the mother had taken the other two kids and they split, left him with dad. He's facing. No, no chance of parole, and the, the amount of all the things added together is like 800 years worth of, I mean, he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison. Good. Take responsibility for your actions. And there are some people who are already 
claiming how unfair and how unjust it is. He's only 14 years old. Well, there's two 14-year-olds who are never going to be 15 years old. There are four families who are shattered and grieving this morning. You've got eight children whose lives will never be the same and are probably going to have to have counseling for who knows how long to get them through. Okay? This 14-year-old needs to be held accountable for his actions. Yeah, and so does his parents, and so does the law enforcement people. It's not my fault. Why didn't God stop me? God made me this way. I'm a product of my upbringing. The devil made me do it. Why did God let me be tempted? I'm only hurting myself. It's everybody else's fault. James chapter 1. Book of James. Back into the New Testament. Find the book of Hebrews right after that. It's the book of James chapter 1. We want to look at verses 12 to 16. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried... He shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Then when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin... When it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. That 14-year-old had been taken out of one junior high school and transferred to another because he was a problem kid. Dad's been going and talking. With, no, just, you know, coach him and help him and get, let's just get him through, you know, the seventh grade here. He's being picked on. He's been, it's like, why is it the school's responsibility to make your child behave the way he ought to behave? I mean, as we were talking about in Sunday school. <laughs> oh, but that's cruel. That's terrible. You know, spank a child? You're going to... I got that old <laughs> garrison belt across my backside more than once. I knew there was consequences for bad behavior. What in the world makes a 14-year-old child think that the solution to his problems is to take a gun and go into the school and shoot everybody he can see? Okay, he wasn't trying to commit suicide as soon as they, the, the, the police got there and challenged him. He dropped the gun. Okay. Oh, you think it's a video game? You're going to get more lives? Yeah. See, Aiken didn't think his sin was going to be a big deal. God doesn't need those things. He's God. He's not going to mess these. You know, it was just, you know, this nice mohair, three-piece Babylonian suit here. Bag full of gold coins and a big wedge of gold. Who's it going to hurt? Who's going to know? Nobody's going to know. I just won't bring them out until after we conquered a few more cities. Then I'll just claim that this was the stuff that I picked up there after God has said it's okay. What's the big deal? Who's it? hurting, no one's going to know. Really? You think?
think so. Romans 12, 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine, God says. I'll repay, saith the Lord. You sinned against me, Aiken. You knew what I said. You sinned against me. You sinned against all of Israel. 